Hi, I'm Carol Coppice, and I'm here today to show you how to get that magic hands magic into your hands. Hopefully by now you've downloaded from my webpage the little page that shows you all the different magic hands positions. And I'm gonna show you how to use them on your harp to get your hands automatic with those positions. I'm gonna start with a position I call the mitten because it's four fingers, one, two, three, four, and there's a gap here. In all these positions, there's often a gap between fingers, and what you wanna do is notice where is that gap. So here's how you start. Take that mitten position, place it on your harp on C at the bottom, C, D, E, G. There's my mitten. My fingers are down, my thumb is up. Play up your position, pulling into the palm and over. I'm not moving my hand at all. Pop your fingers open and replace right where they were while your hand still remembers where that position was, and play down. Now I'm going to move up one. See, I'm trying to place all my fingers at once on the strings. Pop open, replace, play down. Move up one. Pop open, replace, play down. Now you're going to go up an octave. is slow. It doesn't have to go fast. I'm just playing it fast because I can do it by magic. There, I've done an octave. That's 16 times I've reminded my hand of that position so that once you get to the right number of times for you, your hand will do that for you automatically. You won't have to search for C, D, E, G. You just say, give me a mitten and boom, it'll go on. When I use this in a piece, I play, place this bracket, this position, from the bottom if I'm going up or the top if I'm going down. So if I see that it's going up in a piece of music and the bottom note is F, I just place that and the rest of my hand goes there automatically and I pull that position as it comes into the tune. Now here are all the positions for you. That was the mitten. This one I call a teacup because your fourth finger has got the gap and it's kind of like you're drinking a cup of tea with the queen. So it goes like this. Here's a short, here's a stack. That's no gap. Short stack, three fingers. we use a lot in Celtic music, the butterfly, C, D, F, G. So those parts are the wings of the butterfly, and there's his little body right there. Here's one that's a little sort of similar, the bow tie. Karina Hewitt calls this a seagull, C, E, F, A. Here's the gaps right here. finger positions. These are nice because it's easier to get started with these because they're easier. <laughs> Only three fingers. This one's the crab. It's like the pinchers of the crab. Huh? Two together and a gap here. Here we go. Now the opposite of that would be to put the gap at the bottom. Put your second finger up on E, C, E, F. I call that an okay because it's kind of like when people used to go in the old days. Okay. Here are a couple based on the seven position. This one I call the snail. And you can look at this on the paper and see exactly how it goes. And this one I call the snowman. Here's three balls of snow and a hat. Anything you can do to remind your hand that when you give it the cue, this is the one that you want. And remember, it might take you 300 to 500 repetitions to make this automatic, but that happens much faster than you would think. If you warm up with these every day, going up an octave, down an octave, it won't take you more than probably three weeks to start to feel this magic happen in your hands. And I hope that you'll find that it makes your playing more enjoyable, more fluid, more, more fun. I just wish you much good harping and happy magic hands. Thanks for watching.